What's up everybody, welcome back. Thank you so much for taking the time to hang out. Today we're talking about tips and tricks for better time lapses with DJI Osmo Pocket. Let's do this. This video is brought to you by Slink. Slink lets you add links to all your social media pages, websites, and streamable content all in one handy little place. It's like your digital business card. Get started for free today at GetSlink. That is G-E-T-S-L dot I-N-K. Recently, I had the opportunity to visit Florida, and while hanging out with my little brother at Universal Studios, I said, hey, let's actually go ahead and do a tips and tricks video for the DJI Osmo Pocket. Now, I'm honestly a big, big fan of just filming with my phone, but the Osmo Pocket, I feel it's kind of like a little bit step above and not only you can use your phone to compose your shot better and use the app, uh, but you can also use the Osmo Pocket by itself. If you haven't seen the five reasons why I like the Osmo Pocket, go and check out that video. Links are always in the description. But without further ado, let's just go straight to the point and give you tip number one. Don't be afraid to use video in order to recreate time lapse. Longer clips can give you the unique flexibility to start and stop your clips whenever you really, really need them. If you wanna do that really cool technique when you go and stand in front of the camera, start talking, and then you walk away and everything starts moving super fast, that gives you the option to match when you want the clip to start or end according to the proper theme of your video. If you're using any music, any beats, or any sound cues that you want your video to change, Using video often is gonna make it a lot easier. If you're filming 4K, it's gonna take a lot of space. Make sure you have enough storage on your device, SD card, you name it, so you can start moving those files away. Uh, I'm actually getting a Narbuck soon for that same reason because clips are getting out of control. But don't be afraid to use video. Tip number two, make sure you turn on airplane mode or do not disturb. Turn off everything as a matter of fact. There is nothing more annoying than to get a phone call and you've been sitting on a bench for 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes, maybe longer at times, trying to capture that vision that you have in your mind, that time lapse, that crispy, snappy movement of whether it's people, water, clouds, you name it, and then suddenly you get either a text or a phone call and it throws the whole equation out and you've been sitting there for a while. Turn that thing on airplane mode, do not disturb. Preferably turn off Wi-Fi, turn off Bluetooth. Capture your video, don't get interrupted. It plays a lot with your head when things don't go right, you start feeling like you can't do it and ugh, none of that, airplane mode. All right, reason number three, let's talk about your intervals. Longer intervals are definitely gonna look a little bit more dramatic and impactful. However, make sure that if you're doing motion time-lapse, going from point A to point B, make sure those movements are not too sporadic because you don't wanna take your audience from point A to point B super fast and jumpy and jittery. You wanna make sure that that's very fluid. Remember to stretch that duration as far as possible. I usually prefer three seconds and I stretch that in between 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes. Uh, depending on how fast you want things to move or five second intervals if you want more dramatic just faster things happening a sunrise or a sunset happening real fast you definitely want to film for 30 minutes plus even maybe 60 minutes that's why most times whenever i don't have time to properly set up the intervals and the duration and kind of like start thinking in my mind is this really gonna make things look the way I want them, I just record video and just let it do its thing. Just record video and then I have the flexibility of going back and forth. Uh, you see calling back on 
Reason number one, video often can help that interval situation. And that way in post-production, you can make that clip faster, slower, a little bit more flexibility. But definitely, if you're doing point A to point B, like a 180 type of panel, you're definitely gonna want uh, a longer duration. That way it takes your audience from point A to point B without it being super fast and jittery and disorienting. Let me know in the comments if you have your own tips and tricks regarding time-lapse intervals and duration, if you already have it down. Because honestly, this is like one of those things that you always go to the same restaurant and for some reason they charge you differently even though you order the same thing. Uh, the conditions on the day will alter the way that your time-lapse comes out. Um, temperature changes things, the uh, people and the movement in the environment. So if you have some recipes down that you feel like sharing with the community, drop them down there so we can all get better together. talk about battery. Battery is the one thing that whether you're filming on a smartphone, SLR, or on the DJI Osmo Pocket, that is the Achilles heel of all these devices. Because, for example, on the smartphone, this is our phone. This is what we're using to make phone calls and texts. And honestly, I've been in situations where I just film all day and then I'm out with only 10% and then I cannot do what I need to do if I don't have a phone, right? So make sure you prepare yourself with a battery backup. I am personally using a 10,000 milliamp hour, links in the description, but honestly, any battery backup that you have will definitely get you more juice right when you need it. This is an essential tool because time lags will take way longer than you anticipate. And the battery of the DJI Osmo Pocket can run in between 90 to 140 minutes, depending on the resolution, depending on the video, depending on the settings. So arm yourself with a battery backup. If you play your cards right, you can have everything with you in your pocket and you might not even need to bring a backpack which is amazing. Prepare yourself, get a battery, or if you know the location that you're shooting has outlets that you can use or a coffee shop that you can refuel while you're sipping on an iced coffee, which is uh, actually something that I might do today because it's starting to get a little hot in SoCal. Number five. Auto light. This is very important for time lapse and video in general. In order to prevent auto exposure and auto focus to automatically shift, if people are walking right in front of you, you can just simply tap it and hold for about two to three seconds on your screen to lock things down. On the Osmo Pocket, you can do the same if you're using your smartphone. You can always tap to focus on the little screen on the Osmo Pocket, but I found way more success if I have an actual phone connected. I have a bigger viewfinder, so I'm able to select the focus point. You can even go a step further and actually set your shutter speed, your ISO, exposure compensation, and more importantly, something that we all forget more often than none is the white balance. If you're filming longer intervals with a longer duration, you're definitely gonna get a variance in light throughout the day from morning to afternoon and night. So things might get warmer or colder. So make sure you lock your auto white balance so you have a little bit more consistent look throughout your time lapse. Now, the Osmo Pocket can stand by itself. So there's a case to be made in terms of practicality and efficiency. If you take your Osmo Pocket and you find a solid surface where you can put it on, you can set your point A to point B, rock it. More power to you. Having said that, having the right accessories for the right occasion can totally make or break that experience not only for the viewer of your videos, but for yourself as well. Make sure you're always bringing a small little tripod. This is super important because if the surface is not quite adequate for you to put your Osmo Pocket, you might need a little tripod. Recently, I've been using a mix of the Manfrotto, the Smooth Flex, and the PGY Tag Mini tripod, which can also dub as a handheld. As a matter of fact, all of them can. 
um, and they're very, very useful. The reason why I'm starting to like the Smooth Flex because it can actually fold and be used in different surfaces, while the PGY Tech is very lightweight, yet it doesn't feel cheap. It's like light, so if you put it in your pocket, it doesn't feel like you're carrying too much stuff. Also, when using video as time-lapse, one thing to consider is the PGY Tech strap mount. That allows you to have a backpack and just simply clip on uh, that accessory and put the Osmo Pocket right in there. That way, if you're eating a churro, sipping on a drink, you don't have to really worry too much about carrying an extra thing. You're just walking around. Just keep in mind your hands because if you're filming forward and you were to point around, that's also gonna be in the footage. But it's really useful for those walking shots and those ramps. Um, just to simply not have to worry about it, clamp it on a strap in your backpack and just be ready to go. Another great brand besides the PGY Tech accessories is Polar Pro. Both companies make amazing products. They also make lenses like the ND filters that I've used recently. And last but not least, final tip of the day is going to be good old patience. I struggle with this a lot and patience is gonna be way more than 50% of the game. Cause once you said the Osmo Pocket or your smartphone, uh, to record a time lapse. Honestly, the biggest variable of the trend is going to be your own head. So, creating a time lapse is a time consuming process. Make sure you plan ahead, make sure you create a shot list, make sure you're setting yourself up for success. That way, you're not 100% improvising all the time. This plays games in your mind. You start thinking that, oh, maybe I'm not that good. Maybe this is not what I want to do. But if you prepare yourself and you already have in mind or written down the type of shots that you want to acquire for the type of video that you're making, it's definitely going to go a lot easier for you. And you will enjoy it a little bit more. Honestly, I've been in situations where I film and things are not coming out right. People are touching my camera, bumping my camera touching it because it was in the ground, they didn't see it, they run over with a stroller, or it's on top of a trash can and they start throwing trash even though you can see the phone there. But at the end of the day, that's on you, that's not on everybody else. If you wanna blend in, plan ahead, make sure you're preparing yourselves for those variables that you cannot control with a shot list, with some extra entertainment like another phone, uh, bring a book, bring maybe a Nintendo Switch if you have one. Maybe you wanna catch up on some editing while you're filming a 30 minute session. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you have any questions, suggestions, drop them down there so we can continue to create relevant content for you. And if you cannot watch this video, but you'd rather listen to it, make sure you hit the link for my podcast in the description or search on your favorite podcast platform for Crop Factor by EMT Films. Once again, thank you for sharing your time with me. I'll catch you on the next one.